Good morning, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for checking out my videos again and ramblings. This week I'm going to be um, looking at some of the industry guidance notes and books that are out there from the IET and others. Uh, currently at my humble abode, just waiting to set out on, the, on a day's work. Um, and yeah, I thought I'd put a video up regarding some of the industry books because I haven't seen a, another, I mean they probably are out there, but I haven't seen another video of anyone actually talking through them to explain what they are and um, how they can help you as an, an electrician in your future learning and the day-to-day -day job. Um, so yeah, quick overview of what some of these books are, how they can help you, um, what is actually the content inside them without going too in-depth obviously because I'll be getting sued by publishers and authors if anyone actually watches any of my videos. So yeah, that's that's the, the um, direction of this one. So we go through the um, obviously the BS7671 the on-site guide and the guidance notes that come along with that 128. Um, you've also got a bit of a, a look at the EV book and the design um, book that was go with your 2396 and then some of the, the NAPIT books as well that have um, come out of late. So your code breakers and the PRS guide. So I hope you find them useful. Um, please like and subscribe on the channel, a thumbs up or a thumbs down just to see that there's a bit of interaction there and that these might be um, beneficial to some people and yeah if you haven't checked out Monday Club yet over on the Electrician's Guide to Everything YouTube channel or on Podbean you can listen to those and there was Nick Bundy on this week with us uh, it was a good episode to be involved with so if you want to go and check that out as well and um, give the guys a, a thumbs up and a subscribe over there as well all right enjoy so we're going to start with a look at the book that it, it all leads out from really and that's the wiring regs themselves so I'm sure you're all familiar with this, but this is the 18th edition of the regulations. It's already had one amendment, which was to do with um, earth rods and EV charging. And that's just a, a PDF file that you can download for free from the IET's website. There is also a corrections document as well from when this book was first produced. But yeah, this one has all the regulations in it, basically. So you've got everything in there. Um, you've also got information about the special locations, it goes into test and inspection, you've got your um, current carrying capacities of cables, your max ZS values, different um, cable derating factors, you know, every single thing that you could possibly need to reference with electrical design and installation is in there. And it does have lots of other supporting documents that go alongside it that perhaps people aren't aware of, so further guidance notes, and I'm going to run through those now. And we'll start off with the one that most people have probably had experience of and that's the on-site guide so this one's one you can chuck into your tool bag or into the van under the under the seat to have in there to reference when you're out on site and um, you know it's a, a more layman's terms breakdown of the regulations themselves there's um, information in there about how you can drill uh, joist holes for example so it delves into a bit of um, building regulations as well as the um, BS6, BS7671 guide um, there's earthing arrangements in there, you've got some of the um, formulas and tabulated values that you find in the regs, uh, they're all in there as well, it's just a quick site uh, reference based guide, and uh, this is one of the books historically that I've used the most whilst out on working because you know you don't want to be carrying this great big thing around in your actual tool chest if you like and this one fits in there quite nicely so when you need to refer for a bit of information it's handy to have about yourself while the regs might live in the van. And then we lead into the guidance notes. So for those not aware, there is actually eight guidance notes um, if you're not counting the on-site guide. So there's eight numbered ones. And the first one is selection and erection. So that builds onto what the regulations tell us about selecting and erecting electrical equipment and cabling and such. Um, you know, it's quite a thick, thick book. It's the biggest one of all the guidance notes. Um, and it just delves into a little bit more detail of how the regulations can be um, interpreted practically and um, suggestions for meeting compliance with those. Guidance note two is to do with isolation and switching. So as you'd expect, it got, uh, covers isolators and switches. Uh, it's a much thinner book than guidance note one. And, um, you know, again, it just expands on the regulations themselves and gives some more real-world scenarios for how you might approach those regulations um, when you're installing switches and isolators. Guidance note three is one that 
probably you're more likely to have heard of out of all of them and that's the inspection and testing so that covers anything from the practical way you go about approaching test processes so it has um, explanations of what you're actually supposed to do um, there is guidance on the initial frequency of testing um, that you would give you, you know you've got helpful information on how you complete the actual documentation um, it delves into circuit layouts um, how under voltage and over voltage can be affecting electrical systems and how you test and check for that so that's guidance note three guidance note four is protection against fire so this is you know one of the key aspects of electrical safety we're trying to prevent fire and electric shocks and this expands in methods and ways we go about doing that um, accessories in cavities um, you know that how we can avoid the propagation of fire if it does actually um, you know alight the building um, but primarily it's to avoid having fires in the first place so protection against fire uh, it's covered in guidance note 4 guidance note 5 is protection against electric shock so the other founding principle of electrical safety and again you know it's, it's a reasonable sized book expands on the regulations and this is about uh, making sure we're keeping people safe from electrocution and the methods and ways we go about doing that so your ADS and ethanol and bonding is is covered a bit in there and um, you know self pelve and such obstacles and out of reach all of that things all of those things Gantt note 6 is protection against overcurrent so you can see there's a nice picture of a fuse on the front there so that gives a big clue about what that's going to be talking about and it builds on the regulations again with some real world scenarios about you know what kind of installation challenges you're going to face and how to apply the regulations correctly to achieve compliance guidance note 7 is another big one and that's special locations obviously in the regs there's a whole section on special locations but this gives a bit more explanation on on some of those so you know if you've got a special location in particular like caravan park and such you can find it in here and it'll delve a little bit deeper and um, talk about things in a more um, practical site based approach i suppose so help um, figure out what you need to be doing in those special locations guidance note 8 is earthing and bonding this is my favorite one of all the guidance notes myself so we often have the arguments about if we should be um, using a cpc fly lead onto the back of a, um, a flush mounted metal box if it's got a fixed lug and this actually has in there that you know you don't need to do that whilst it's to be encouraged you don't have to uh, same with if some tray work isn't extraneous it'll explain in there that, that you know you don't have to bond it um, so it answers a few of the questions that that the regulations produce and um, you know it's, it's one of the resources you can go to and say oh, actually this is what one of the guidance notes says and um, whilst perhaps it's not best practice it does meet the intention of the regulations which is you know the minimum standard that we're looking to work to but you know guidance note 8 earthing and bonding it's often a, an interesting topic and um, you know that's one of the books I've thumbed through the most over the last um, well, I've had these books now getting on for a year or whenever they came out um, I had previous versions as well but yeah this is one of my favorite ones yeah because I'm sad and um, I like to learn about earthing and bonding and the regulations themselves cover it obviously quite in depth but it's nice to read through something that's written with some practical examples of what you'll find in real world scenarios another book if you're looking at going on the um, design course so the 2396 is this one and this delves into the world of designing electrical systems and the calculations you might need to use again it's pulling information that you will find in the regulations anyway but presents it in a um, more easy to understand format based on design um, so you know you've got information in there to do with your grouping factors and how you don't always have to apply them if circuits are unlikely to be under simultaneous load um, you know there's, there's a whole depth of information in there so if you're considering the 2396 I think it's actually a, a prerequisitive of the course that you um, have the book so um, you're going to need it anyway but you know that's that's a good one this is one of the more recent ones it's the fourth edition of the electric vehicle charging uh, equipment installation guide and or the code of practice actually this one's not a guide <coughs> this is a practice should be working too um, 
obviously it's in its fourth edition already and this industry is one of the fastest moving in the trade and it seems to change all the time so it's worth keeping up to date with what the current requirements are for electric vehicle charging uh, if you're not an electrician doing uh, charge points at the moment you're definitely going to be at some stage in the future because we've got a whole um, network of electric cars to get on with supplying over the next coming uh, years so you know if you've not looked into it already I recommend you pick up a code of practice maybe get yourself on a course and add another string to your burn um, learn a bit about electric vehicle charging another book is the ICI the ICR code breakers from Napit. I did have the first version which was a lot thinner this one actually expands, in, expands into other areas away from the actual codes themselves which is great um, any resource and information is to be applauded and it does say right at the start of this book that it's not a definitive guide to codes as such it's not like black and white that this is what the codes are it's just based on opinion um, having consulted a, a selection of industry people who've contributed to the book and this is what they've come together as a as a um, agreed coding system if you like I always like to leave it to people to make their own engineering judgment based on their assessment of an electrical installation um, and coding is obviously such a divisive, divisive subject that people will argue and fall out over, over coding all the time and if you've not actually been stood in front of the installation it's often not as easy as it first would appear to code based on pictures um, but the thing I like about this the most is where it gives you a, a code in, in particular, so it might say it's a, a C2 for something or other, and it'll refer the regulation itself. So, you know, if you are in doubt on something, we all have those doubts. <coughs> is this code suitable for for what I've identified? And I just want to just want to check that, and um, you know, it's nice to have that first. So you can go to that, have a little look through, and find the particular scenario you're faced with, and then reference back to the reg books and make your own mind up. So you can make your own engineering judgment um, from that. And that's a really nice way to use code breakers. Uh, it's not a book I refer to very often because I've been doing this a long time myself now. But if you're just coming into the world of inspection and testing, and I'd encourage anybody to, to look into doing that. It's progression of your career. Um, you know, testing is such a, an involved and um, tricky subject area. Um, and to have that book there as a bit of a reference and um, guide to work from is a good thing. Another one that I've just picked up recently from Napit is the um, PRS, so Private Rented Sector uh, Guidance for Landlords and Electrical Inspectors. And that delves into you know what's expected from the current change in law and what landlords actually have to be um, doing to meet their, their requirements for safe and habitable homes. And then um, what our responsibilities are as electricians in the way we approach code in those installations and... Um, improvement works we carry out so that they can be let safely and the time frames in which that has to be done so it's a really nice guide that they have it produced and it's not particularly expensive and it does help when you're trying to explain to landlords what the intent of the new um, laws are you can get that book out and you know point out the sections in it that apply to them and um, you know it makes for an easier conversation because a lot of landlords just think you're trying to rip them off all the time <laughs> So, you know, that was nice that Nafit went to the trouble of producing that. And, of course, these are just a small selection of the actual books. So you've got the IT official guidance notes, but there's all sorts of other industry guides as well. The NIC do an excellent uh, version of the on-site guide. And they've got other books as well related to um, snags and solutions. Um, you know, there's there's books from industry people that are away from CPSs and the IET who produce great learning material. There's the NVQ training manuals that you can get to go alongside your um, NVQ Level 3. And all of this is now available in digital format. I prefer it as a, as a physical copy because I like to have a thumb through books rather than sit staring at screens. I just get lost on um, social media and other irrelevance to not bother actually reading what I went to do. So you know, having a book that you can just switch off everything else from and, and take in that, that information is a good thing. So yeah, I hope you found that useful. Sometimes people are aware of these guidance notes and the other books that are out there to help them learn and develop their careers further. So if you found it interesting, please like and subscribe on my channel. Um, I'm going to try and get some more installation-based content because that seems to be what people want to see. But while I was um, at home, I thought I'd get these books out and have a little zip through them and show you show you what's there. So thanks for watching. Cheers. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you found that interesting and at least gives an overview of what some of these books are if you wasn't aware of them already. And um, you know. Obviously, there's the investment in, in buying these things. 
but well, you know you get the value back from that if you are um, looking to develop your career and there's some of the books on on the courses that you'll need to take that would involve buying them anyway obviously with amendment two now under draft and that's looking like coming into force in 2022 2023 so these books will probably all be changing again at that time so you can get your, your digital copies um, you can you can register with BSI and the IET for example uh, your CPSs will have access to digital content as well so I mean there's, there's cheaper ways of doing it um, if you don't necessarily need a physical book in your hand uh, also while we're on if you head over to the apprentice one-to-one -one Instagram page we've got a competition running over there to win a we're a top driver um, that finishes next Wednesday uh, so the, the date today is the 1st of October uh, next Wednesday that's 2020 <laughs> Uh, if you head on over there and um, like the post, share it in your story and tag three friends, that's all you need to do and um, give yourself a shot of winning the top driver. So thanks for watching and catch you again on the next one.